Hey everybody, uh, my name is William Muse. Uh, most people call me Bill or Moose. Uh, we're gonna talk today a little bit about API. Just to give an overview, a nice, quick, easy way to understand what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, it's a very versatile platform and I think you guys will like to know what's there. So well, the first thing you need to know about API, API is really, really young. It hasn't been around for, you know, uh, 60 years since a computer started good and good. EDI has been around for a long time. API is just a baby. It hadn't been out there long at all. There's no real standards. There's not a group out there that says, hey, you must do this. There's no real parents. It's the Wild West. API has been around and, and it's literally just a way to communicate between two programs. That's really, it, it's just an application interface. That's all it is. So there's nobody with any kind of specification or standard to it. Um, everyone has their own specs. So everyone has decided how they want to use their API and how they want to set it up. So therefore we don't have a, a very rigid structure to it. And when it comes to that, the file types you use to go back and forth on an API differ as well. Some people use XML, some people use JSON, some people use other text-based specifications on how they set up their files. Um, but the thing about API is when you're using it, it's for time sensitive applications. What I think of in the in the transportation world is rating. When you wanna get a rating for something, you, in the old days, you'd call somebody up and you'd ask them or you'd send an email and they'd get back with you. Um, you know, it would take time, but in today's fast paced world, rates changing so fastly, API rating has become such an amazing thing for us to have. Uh, so we use it for things that we need immediate action on. Um, it can also be used for things that don't need to be as immediate uh, because it's a very flexible. The one thing about API is it is the most flexible way to talk back and forth between two systems because there's no specification. You're not trying to squeeze what you want into somebody else's structured rules. Um, well, one specification can be used for many, many operations as well. There's so many times where you go in and you're trying to do something. You gotta do this if you're tendering and this if you're rating and this if you're doing it. Well, API, the way that they do API is when they make their specification, it needs to be able to do it all. It's like a jack of all trades, it can do it all. So the reason I wanted to show you a little tiny clip of what it would look like if you use the XML. JSON and XML are very, very similar in the way that they do things. And the reason that, that APIs use this type of format is because it is so versatile. And literally all you have is you have a, you have a small tag. This right here starts a tag. This is for an address type. That's, that's the tag, right? sorry, the address, that's the tag, and it ends down here. So everything else is gonna be placed under a tag of address. I used an address, because everybody knows, everybody has an address, everybody knows how they work. So address line one, city, state, you can read this. It makes perfect sense, and you can add things. If you need a, um, and I left this in here for, these are, these are called attributes, this is a bill to your address and it's also non-residential. These are things that I have in some of the XMLs that I work with. So I left them in here for you to see it. You can put attributes on it, you can put tags on it, you can put child elements. You, these are all words that are in there. This is what your de developers will have to work with if they go to work with an API. And it's really important for you to just kind of see it and understand how flexible that is. When somebody sets up an XML for an API, they can put whatever they want to under those tags. Uh, a tag can be a shipment. It could be, what are you doing today? Are we doing an action? Are we doing a ad? Are we doing a tender? Are we doing a rating? Are we doing, those are the kind of things you can put on there. And for your, you can put an action tag and then you just do what the action tag is. You, there's so many things you can do with this. Very, very versatile. So let's kind of figure out how API works. Nice little drawing here. All right, if you look up at the top, can see right here, you're gonna have to format your request according to the specs of your API provider. You're gonna make a request, and just for a few examples, tender, tracking, rating, these are the kind of things that we use in the transportation world. It's gonna be the same basic format for all of them. Once you set it up for one, 
you're doing minor tweaks to do the rest of them. So say you're tendering, you will send the response to the, send your request to the provider. The provider, when the file is created on the server, makes the action happen. It's not waiting for certain hours of the day that it wants to do it. It's, it's immediate. When you create a file on that server, it is triggered to create an action to look through that file, figure out what you want to do, and send a response back. That's literally what API is. So on your side, you have to figure out how to format a response and how to consume the response, format your request, and consume the response that comes back. That makes it so simple, so easy, yet so complex. Nuts and bolts, that's what API is. However you format your files down here, according to their API provider specs, you get that request to them, they get you a response and you're good to go. That's API in a small nutshell.